one 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 give me one 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 give me give me one 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 give me one 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 give me one 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 give me one hi everyone this is suvarshla working as an associate professor in the department of computer science and engineering in this video i would like to discuss about the traversal techniques of a graph so just to re revise basic terminology of the graph and how the graph is going to be represented what are the difference uh, different uh, traversal techniques that is breadth first traversal depth first traversal techniques then we are going to discuss about the time complexities of the graph traversal techniques so just i'll revise this graphic graph basics a graph is uh, defined as a collection of nodes connected by edges j is defined as a set of two set of four, a pair of two sets v comma e v is a set of vertices and e is a set of edges and these graphs are going to be useful in our daily life in various uh, situations as well as in computer science also graphs are very very useful to us all shortest path problems maximum flow problems and our network related problems will be considered as applications of graphs only even when we are discussing about the network establishment or our town planning etc all are based upon graphs only graphs are non linear data structures only just like our trees but they are more general because these support many many relationship they have connected various connected components will be there there are two kinds of graphs generally we will consider directed graph and indirected graph in case of directed graph edges will have the node from which the edge starts and the edge to which it is going to be and that is each edge is represented as an ordered pair then it will be considered as a directed graph and the edge which is unordered pair representation then we will consider it as a undirected graph undirected graph if there is a edge between a b and same edge can be considered b to a also these are the two examples are given two graphs one is ordered directed graph another one is undirected graph so this is directed this is undirected so if you observe that the representation of first set is having five vertices so 1 2 3 4 5 this is same in both cases but if you observe here pairs are edges are 1 2 2 3 1 3 1 3 5 5 4 1 5 2 and and but here only the edge will be represented you observe there are two edges between 1 and 2 1 2 2 is there 2 to 1 we will represent both that is order is going to be important here so ordered pair of edges are going to be considered then we will ordered pair an edge is represented as a ordered pair then it is a directed graph so as like all other types of data structures graph is also one non linear data structure to represent a graph internally in our system that is during the implementation of a graph in system there are two techniques are there so the data structures used for graph representation or a graph implementation are adjacency matrix adjacency list that means we aware of that static allocation dynamic allocation static allocation is array allocation dynamic allocation is linked list allocation so the same we are going to term in case of graphs static allocation in the form of a array two dimensional array it is known as adjacency matrix representation and dynamic allocation in the form of list adjacency list notation what is adjacent here each vertex is going to be considered as adjacent to another vertex if there is an edge between those two vertices so a graph can be represented in the form of adjacency matrix for example if there are n vertices are there and we are going to represent that particular graph as n by n matrix form adjacency matrix consists of n by n where n is number of vertices so n by n means there will be various kinds of elements will be there no those 
can be represented a an element can be represented ij that is i thiru and j th column element this is going to be zero or one if it is zero if there is no edge is equal to one if there is an edge so this is going to be zero if there is no edge and this is will be considered to be as a one if there is an edge in case of both directed and undirected graphs similar way in case of directed undirected graph the matrix is will be symmetric in case of undirected graph matrix need not be symmetric but a graph is weighted graph weighted graph means each edge is having some weight then instead of representing one we will represent in adjacency matrix with a corresponding edge weight value so this is an example if you are going to consider so adjacency matrix i'll represent first i'll explain 1 2 these are the undirected graph i considered so how many five so five rows and five columns are there and there is a edge between 1 and 2 1 and 2 edge means from first row second column 1 you observe from 1 to 3 is an edge so 1 to 3 means 1 from 1 to only two edges are there remaining zero if you observe 1 to 1 1 to 4 1 to 5 similarly 2 2 to 3 is there 2 to 1 is there and 2 to 3 is there 2 to 4 is there three edges remaining are like this we can represent if this is a weighted graph weighted graph means if each edge is having some weight 50 60 like that instead of representing by one we will represent with respect to that respective weights so this is adjacency matrix so if number of vertices are in we need to use n square locations while processing also minimum n square complexity will be there why because we have to access no so then all elements need to be accessed then it will be n square h coming to the adjacency list representation adjacency list is going to be having a one singular dimension of n n is number of vertices and from each location from each index it will be giving all vertices which are adjacent to that particular vertex adjacent means for example one whichever the nodes are connected with a direct edge those are all adjacent for one two is adjacent three is adjacent for two one is adjacent and three is adjacent and four is adjacent that means immediately connected with edges those are all adjacent those are represented as a linked representation list representation so from first node two three are adjacent second node one three four are adjacent for three for three we are having adjacent three that is two one five so 1 2 5 is there and so on and so forth so this way you can represent the adjacency list also so whichever the way we are going to represent coming to the traversal traversal as we discussed in earlier video also each element must be accessed once now in this example also graph traversal each node must be accessed once these traversal techniques are also used for searching also actually so searching means it is one kind of traversal but we will stop searching process when the element found if the element not found till end of the graph we are going to traverse no so that it will equivalent to traversal unsuccessful search equivalent to traversal so search so that's why we whatever the techniques are used for traversal we can use for graph search techniques also so whether the vertices are visited or not that we have to consider in case of traversal now graph traversal finds the edges to be used in search process without creating any loops that means when we are using graph traversal there should not to form a cycle we have to check always if cycle forms means we have to identify it otherwise what happens same elements are going to be traversed again and again to avoid that cycle have to be 
every time we have to check it is it forms a cycle or not if it doesn't form continue there are two standard techniques are there graph traversal techniques breadth first traversal techniques and depth first traversal techniques how these are going to be implemented breadth first traversal techniques will use an axillary storage queue as a additional data structure whereas depth first traversal technique uses stack as an auxiliary storage data structures so in case of bft queue is an additional auxiliary storage data structure and in case of dft stack is used that means both traversal techniques need some additional memory space during the execution of these two algorithms we will always keep track of one variable as uh, uh, known as or we will consider it as a status of the each node value that means nodes are n nodes are there we will generate a single array state we will declare a single array state of n locations and what is the sub names that's why n so state of 4 1 is equal to state of 2 is equal to state of 3 is equal to that means state of 1 means first node status state of 2 means second first vertex one vertex second vertex third vertex and so on. what is this state will be provided the status or a state whatever it may be you are going to use the variable name only we will use a logic of having this status may be having either 1 2 or 3 so we will use a variable status associated with each vertex in other words we will use a variable status associated with each vertex so status 1 represents it is ready state and status 2 represent it is waiting state and status 3 represents the completion of that respective node processing so by by using this status three status three status is processed to status 1 2 3 we will consider so status 1 status 2 status 3 so these three traversal techniques are going to be two traversal techniques are used to a status variable in which you are going to consider the respective node was processed the respective node is a waiting state or the respective node is in the waiting state so by using this technique uh, the, uh, variable additional variable we will keep track of the status of the node or a vertex first we will discuss the breadth first search or a breadth first traversal techniques we will discuss only traversal but we can modify this traversal technique as a search process by stopping the process of the searching or a traversal when that element is going to be found action so that's why whenever we are going to consider breadth first traversal or a depth first traversal you can convert into search process and uh, that means the traversal process is going to be stopped when the search is successful otherwise continue the process and you can inform that search is unsuccessful so that's why in terms or terminology we will use bft or bfs what is general idea in this bfs traversal we have to start a node or a vertex some vertex a first we will examine in case of breadth means level by level so first we will examine the starting node then we will examine all its neighbors neighbors means its immediate children in other words you can say then neighbors of the first child then neighbors of the second neighbors of the third and so on so forth this process is going to be continued till there are no vertices is to be visited further for this we are using as i explained to you earlier by using a queue system queue data structure because first we have to traverse a node a and then its or neighbors let us assume that these neighbors are b c d we processed then which one i have to take first neighbor again first neighbor means if i am going to insert these elements in a queue then first neighbor will come first second neighbor will come second third neighbor will come third that means fifo first in first out so that's why queue is used as a auxiliary data structure 
That means this BFT implements level by level, first node, its neighbors, then each neighbor's neighbors and so on and so forth till all elements are all vertices are going to be visited. We are going to use Q as an additional or auxiliary data structures. In addition to that, we are going to maintain a array, status array, which will give status of the each node. This is the normal algorithm. Traversal of a given graph, beginning is starting a node. You can take, you can start from any node. And initially, all nodes status will be one only, right? All Initialize all nodes, ready state, that is status is one only. And put the starting node A in the queue first and change the status is to waiting status. So whenever it is inserted into a particular node into a queue data structure, its status changes to two. That means it is waiting for processing. When it is... Uh, taken from the queue, deleted from the queue and processed, then the status becomes 3. Because this variable indicates the respective node was in the ready state or in the waiting state or a processed state. Whenever we are considering the neighbors know, so then if already a node was already processed, depending upon the status only we can verify so that any loop can be avoidable by us. So, what we are doing, repeat the following steps until Q is empty. What are the steps? Remove the front node from the Q, process the node N and change the status of the node N as a 3. That means processed. Then add it to the rear of the Q, all the neighbors of the node N. N process, no, all its neighbors must be inserted in the Q. Inserted in the Q means before, after processing all its siblings like that. So, when we are inserting the neighbors into Q, change the status as a 2. And insert into the Q only those nodes which are having status 1. Which are having status 1 means which are ready to process. And change the respective neighbors status as a 2. So, if it is already 2 or 3, <coughs> no need to insert again. So, that it can be avoided. So, this is the BFT algorithm or BFS as I explained to you. So U is initial, we instead of V is equal to 1 and repeat for all vertices of W adjacent from U. If V is equal to 0, then add to Q. You may be considering 0, 1, 2 or 1, 2, 3 depending upon your logic actually. So in case of here, V instead of I1, if I has already been visited and the graph G is and array, a global array is going to be used by this algorithm. Explain this is one of the examples we are using a procedure. Let us assume that this is a graph, given graph. And these are having, we will represent this by using an adjacency list. You can process by using adjacency matrix also. And adjacency list means A. What are the adjacency? A, F, C, B. B adjacents are? 1, 2, 3 adjacent, that is A, C, G and like that we represented by using adjacency list. Remember that whenever we are applying any graph traversal techniques in our applications, all of us need not get the same order. Like tree traversal, we need not get the same order. Tree traversal, if you are considering in order means any one of us are going to be do, uh, doing the on same tree, in order traversal must be the same order of elements but in case of graph it need not be. Why? Because when we are representing by using adjacency list whatever the elements we are representing as adjacency list there is no any restriction in this uh, sequence of the list elements. I can represent adjacents to A or FCB or BCF or CB etc. Whichever the order we are representing you no, know, according to that uh, the final order of traversal might be changing actually because in the same order we are going to process while doing the neighboring nodes of the A actually. That means the way which we are representing our adjacency list may affect the our order of the nodes also. But in general what happens in real-time application while maintaining this adjacency list 
the adjacency list elements are arranged in a some alphabetical order or some dictionary order will be processed used so that what happens we may not miss any of the respective neighbor when we are representing as a adjacency list for that purpose only but there is no any such rule actually so that's why depending upon the list of the adjacency list no the order of the traversal might be changing actually so we will follow the steps for this graph and we will identify according to this adjacency list so if you change any of the order here this order is going to be changed by so what is the way we are going to initially all nodes you observe all nodes are having status as one ready status then first i am starting from a you can start from any node no need to have only in case of trees it must be from root here there is no such concept in graphs from any vertex you can start this traversal technique that will be considered as a source vertex in other words so i am pushing or uh, inserting a into q so q i am inserting q status is a that means what is the status of a when it is waiting status no 2 then i have to consider all its neighbors a will be uh, deleted from the queue current node is queue and all its uh, neighbors must be inserted into the queue it must be processed it is deleted as well as processed then all its neighbors must be inserted into queue what are the neighbors fcb fcb are inserted into queue again what we have to do take one element that is the first element of the queue that is ef first element of q is deleted process it then f neighbors must be again included what are the f neighbors acd so acd must be included actually but while including status of a is already 3 okay so we have to cb is there so status of c is already 2 only d is having status 1 only d is having status 1 a and c are having status 3 and 2 so that's why those need not be included in my queue i have to include only d must be included by changing its status as 2 like this this process is going to be continued that means here the status d is changed to and it is included what is the next element deleted from queue c what are the adjacencies of c a b d e f g a is over what is a status is 3 completed then b b status 2 completed no need to insert then d d status is also no need to insert and e f g e is 1 f is already over and g so only f g are having status 1 so f g are the neighbors of c which are not yet included in our ready state at all not it included in our queue not it processed all are they are ready to so that's why one from one these two are included so what are the things we are including e and g we are including in our queue once we are including queue what happens this status is changed to this status is also changed to remember now from now onwards i have to consider the status of who this is completed no so this row i have to consider further now i have to delete when i am deleting b is there for me so what is b the adjacency list of b is a c g a is 3 c is 2 c is 3 and g is 2 all are having status changed from 1 so that's why no need to include any of its neighbors then i processed b then i have to delete d d is deleted front no q no please remember so front element is deleted d d is processed what are the chief adjacency list adjacency of adjacency elements are what is this of the d r we are having c f e g c is having 3 f is also having 3 g is also having 3 only j j is having 1 then we can consider j can be included in my queue so that's why j can be changed as a 2 I included Q, no, so changed to. So such a way we can do it actually. So when we are deleting E, E when we C D G J K, so 
CD, GJ are already there. Only K is having one. That is uh, changed to status. K is included. E is processed. Then G is deleted. B, C, E, K. Now you observe all are having changed from one to either two or three. So that's why G neighbors need not be included here. And then processed G. J is deleted. J neighbors also D, E, K already changed status from one to either two or three. So that's why no need to include in Q. J is processed. Then K is deleted. K is also processed. K elements E, G, J already status was changed from one to three. That means by the time Q is empty, all elements are processed and that means all elements are going to be traversed. So exactly once we stayed. So this is the order of our VFT. So the status variable, if you observe this, the status variable gives us an idea whether that particular node is in the ready state or in the waiting state or in the processed state. If it is ready state, we need to consider. If it is processed state, we need not consider at all because already processed, no, we can discard it. If it is in waiting state, Q will take care of that process. This way we can traverse, this is the BFS. So if you observe here, the this based upon this order of this adjacency list, here there may be a change because we are inserting into Q in the same order in which we created adjacency list, no? So that's why in the same order, deletion is also happening actually. So in case of uh, breadth-first traversal of a graph, uh, in which way we are inserting and the same way we are going to delete. Order of the visitings are going to be in order of uh, in which it is inserted actually. So by using this uh, BFS traversal, we can do processing of the R elements processing or a traversal of elements or nodes or vertices in level by level. In other words, you can consider. The another traversal technique of graphs are depth first traversal. Depth first. That means whenever we are starting from a node, it has to travel till depth. There is no further traversal is possible to us. This may be considered to be as a leftmost path we are travel, travel, uh, traveling in our tree traversal now. We can compare like that. What are the steps here? Visit the adjacent unvisited vertex. Unvisited vertex, mark it as a visitor, display it, push it into stack. Why we are pushing the stack? Its uh, neighbors may be considered further actually. If no adjacent vertex is found, pop out from the vortex or pop from the stack, then all its vertices must be considered. Any adjacency vertices are there. Those are going to be pushed. Repeat step one and two until stack is empty actually. Depth first search and traversal techniques are going to be, both can be considered here. By using this depth first traversal technique, Unvisited techniques, unvisited node is going to be considered. Then it's immediate adjacent, then immediate adjacent, then immediate adjacent, and so on and so forth. Every time we will check whether it is already visited or unvisited, we will consider. So this algorithm similar to the in order traversal of the binary tree and DFT algorithm uses a stack as a temporary storage and we will use again as a status field can be used by us to check whether that particular node is visited or waiting state or uh, processed already. So the search terminates when there are no unvisited vertex are available or reachable from the any of the visited ones, then we will stop the process actually. So this is the normal algorithm, DFT algorithm, depth first traversal on a graph G. The algorithm executes DFT on a graph G beginning at a starting node A. Initialize all nodes to the ready state as usual in case of BFT also. Now instead of Q, we are using push pop related to stack. That means whichever inserted recently, that will be popped out. That means whichever the element is recently considered as a visited, uh, uh, but 
ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಸೊ ಪುಷ್ಟಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ನೋಡಿ ಏನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಟು ರಿಪೀಟ್ ದಿ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ಅಂಟಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಟಿ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಪಾಪ್ ಟಾಕ್ ನೋಟ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ದ ನೋಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೋಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ತ್ರೀ ದೆನ್ ಪುಷ್ ಆಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನೈಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ರೆಡಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಟು ವಿಲ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅಡ್ಜಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಡ್ಜಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ಡ್ ದ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಲಾಜಿಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ನೌ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇನಿಷಿಯಲಿ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಪಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ so actually depth first means in other way you can consider a b c d g h b a actually a already we said no so that's why i'll come back recent one whichever we said process that will be taken here so so when whichever is considered to be as a recent one that will be considered here so that's why again i'll tra- start traversing and already we said about x came then we will stop like that backtracking will be considered in other words now when we are using normal algorithmic notation and having this status you can use like directly what are the a so current node is a push the a into stack 2 we made and we have to consider the after that i am traversing like b b is pushed then changed status as 2 then c c is pushed changed status as 1 then f is pushed adjacency list we are going to so pushed then change its status as 2 so b c f after that we are going to consider and pop out all adjacency list no all adjacencies are going to be pushed into stack that's all so what we are doing first a what are the adjacency list of a fcb so fcb means b c f are is pushed popped out f so what are the adjacency list of f adjacency list of f or acd so acd means here we have to check a status is 3 no need to consider c status is 2 no need to consider t t will be pushed same logic we are going to use here stack there we are using q that's all q means uh, which are inserted first that are going to be processed stack means which are inserted recently that will be processed so you if you observe here i am going to pop out popping means d recently d will be popped out and d will be processed once d is processed all its neighbors of d neighbors of d means here we have c f e j c u c is already having we are going to consider c is having 2 and e is also having 2 f is also having 3 j is having 1 so that's why we are going to make it as a 2 j is in pushed into stack same same process as a pft but what we are doing we are using stack because of stack recently inserted element is going to be popped and processed because of that bf traversal becomes as a df traversal now if you pop out j is going to be popped out what are the nodes of j and j is having the child as a k which is need to be processed that will be changed remaining things are and j is processed pop out k is popped out and k child only k is having a neighbor which is having g having one all other neighbors are either 2 or 3 so it was changed k is g is changed as 2 and it is pushed into stack k is processed from here onwards i will pop out g and all its neighbors are going to be none of the neighbors are having one so it is processed 
then pop out the or uh, none of the neighbors of here are having one so it is uh, no neighbors are inserted or pushed then c is popped out neighbors of c are all having status 2 or 3 only so that's why no need to in push into stack it will be processed after popping b there are no neighbors of b which are having status as 1 so that i can push into stack so that's why it is uh, no night processed so this is the depth first traversal of the our given graph of course this is not the unique solution as i told you depending upon the adjacency list representation etc so if you represent here a f d k j then k and g then e and g e actually we have to go and c then b all are visited as a depth first traversal so by using stack so both the traversal technique logic is same there we are using q the, here we are using stack because of that itself the order is going to be changed actually so this depth first traversal algorithm is uh, both uh, either depth first traversal algorithm is it in order traversal similar to in order traversal dft algorithm is similar to bft and uh, except now use a stack instead of q and status is used to tell us the current status of the node so this dft algorithm was uh, explained so based upon this dft algorithm the dft search can also be processed now by considering these two algorithms what is the complexity if g is represented by using an adjacency list our dft algorithm complexity is going to be order of edges and if g is represented using adjacency matrix here it is will be order of vertices plus order of edges you can say number of vertices but in case of uh, either dfs algorithm or bfs algorithm if you are going to represent by using an adjacency matrix it will become order of n square because we have to check what is adjacent adjacent to that particular node adjacent to the particular node means i have to use uh, a matrix matrix means a two dimensional array and uh, you have to consider the array is going to be represented and processed by using two inner loops that is a nesting of the two loops actually so by using these uh, two techniques uh, depending upon the representation of the data structure which we are using for storing our or uh, representing our graph in our system based upon the data structure the complexity will be changed so the maximum time complexity and space complexity of a graph of g n comma e nodes are adjacency list time complexity is n plus e space complexity is order of n if adjacency matrix then time complexity is order of n square and space complexity is going to be again theta or order depending upon the bound we are going to consider actually so depending upon bound we can consider whether that particular matrix can be specified whether theta or upper bound or lower bound are consisting based upon that theta or big o notation can be used by us so in brief the analysis when we are coming to the analysis of the complexity of the algorithm in case of bft or dft in both cases the space complexity and time complexity will be depends upon the structure which we are using to represent our graph adjacency list or adjacency matrix based upon that only variation will be there and there is no other variation either you follow dft or bft so we can follow either of them the time and space complexities are only based upon the representation but not the traversal process actually of course in some applications we will use bft some applications we will use and uh, dft actually so either of them can be considered by us depending upon our need actually that's all complexity wise there is no difference in between these two traversal techniques 
only space complexity also. Here we are using Q, there we are using stack. Additional space is required in both cases of size our vertex size actually. So by using any of these two techniques, we can access the elements of a graph as well as we can search for an element exists in our graph or not actually. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.